Listen up, cluckheads. You're listening to Whiskey and Why with Rooster and the Madman, where we talk about common sense, current events, the Constitution, and morals. Morals. While comparing drinks of yesteryear to drinks of today. So sit back, relax, leave us a comment. Here comes Whiskey, Whiskey and Wine. Wine. Yeah, so anyway, I mean, he's, he's been off the air for a, a few weeks because everything has been going on, and uh, found turns out that he's on a, an important fact-finding mission. Oh, is this where he was looking for the, the man in the boat, right? Yeah, he was looking for the man in the boat. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Nah, yeah. yeah, there you go. The, the search, search continues. continues. <laughs> Hopefully he'll get that figured out before his wedding night. <laughs> Well, you know, his wedding night's coming up on January oh, sixth. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully by then they'll get it. They'll get it all yeah. figured out. Yeah, figure it out. So, so oh, welcome back, look kids. You know who we are. You know what we do. Current events, common sense, constitution, and uh, some morals here and there. She's not here with us. Again she's not tonight. here, but she's here with us in spirit, along with uh, the, with a drummer next a door. along with the band next door, and that's okay. So if we have to uh, kind of take some breaks because they're picking up on our mics, and we will, but. Until then, we're, we'll we'll power through it. You know, and between me getting hurt and everything else going on, we've been off the air for a couple weeks. Yeah, you know, life gets in the way, injuries get in the way, and you know. Man, that was weird. I ain't never had an injury like that before. Well, you know, it's it's about yeah. to happen to you know everybody. You know, you one get out of old, five guys. Yeah, you know, one out of five guys has that same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the worst labia majora sprain I've ever had. Let me tell you, man. Yeah. Uh, but no, seriously, I mean that was that was bad. Like, yeah, it I, looked bad. You had it wrapped up pretty good though. Then that was on the good day. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it was it was it was definitely interesting. So, but it's good to be back. It's good to to get to get back on the show and yeah. get back on the episode eighty two. So. Episode eighty two. And what do we got today? You you decided to choose. Yeah. So today I, I, we're doing an amber ale. It's called Fire Ant Funeral. Wasn't uh. What, wasn't this from the same company that did the uh, the Pantera beer? Yeah, so it is the um, Texas, Ale, Texas Project. Ale Project. Yeah, yeah they're out at, right here in uh, Dallas, Texas, off of Riverfront uh, Riverfront Boulevard. Uh, so it's a local beer. You know, it's Deep Dallas Radio. We play on Deep Dallas Radio. We're we're recording in, in the bunker in Dallas. So why not have why not have, a, a why not Dallas, have Dallas beer? beer. And yeah. you know, it's it's a chilly one oh nine today. It is. Yeah, and so, on the pavement, it was like 175. Yeah, so I couldn't so. help. We got to do beer because it's yeah. so dang hot. Just, you know, you need, who doesn't need a cold beer at the end of the day? So, so um, I had a bottle of water that had kind of gone bad in my car. Threw it out on the, the sidewalk. And um, about, it was about 12, 10, 12 ounces of water. And it actually completely evaporated in less than like two and a half, three minutes. Well, I'm not surprised. I remember back in 80, 81, whenever we had that heat wave when I was a kid. Um, uh, yeah, the rooster is that old. Uh, anyways, my brother actually fried an egg on the sidewalk because the news says it was so hot you could fry an egg. Well, in 2011, whenever we almost beat that record, 81 was like 42 straight days of yeah. straight days of 100 degree heat. And um, in 2011, it's whenever we had the 40 straight days. I was in I was in school at the time. I was getting I was getting a degree, and they had freshly paved the uh, the parking lot right before all the hundred degree heat started, and it was miserable because the asphalt could never actually like solidify. And I was dumb and got me a brand new pair of shoes, brand new pair of New Balance running shoes, and it completely melted off the uh, the sole of the shoe walking yeah, across I, the parking lot. I had lot. Uh, years and years ago. I had a motorcycle when I was young, and uh, I rode the motorcycle. Uh, and it was such a hot day, and it was on a not too old of a new blacktop road. Uh, and uh, back in the you know the '80s, we still had white jeans and you know all that kind of oh, cool yeah. rock and roll stuff. Uh, and my chrome pipes and my jeans and my shoes were just covered mm -hmm. in melted asphalt, just kicking up off the you know yeah. off the road onto me. So don't wear shorts. Luckily, is you know I always learned don't wear shorts <laughs> when you ride a motorcycle. And that don't was, uh, wear shorts. Yeah, that was a good thing because uh, hot asphalt uh, on a hot day is not a great. Well, thing. you know it's a hot day. Let's see where this beer is. Oh yeah, so. So it's the uh, fire ant funeral. Fire ant funeral. The the can is really cool. It's got, got a big fire ant on it. It says balance without the bite, six percent alcohol. Uh, what else does it say? Rest in peace, you devil bastards. 
<laughs> what? Where does it say that? Yeah, on the side of the oh, can. Oh, it sure does. Right yeah. there beside the ant stinger. Rest yeah. in, R.I.P., you devil bastards. Yeah. So I can say that because I'm quoting the can that is not the madman actually saying the word bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a quote. So, yeah, yeah, so it, yeah, it's a quote. So it, uh, it's okay. There's no reason for the morals to shoot me a text yeah. message going, what the cluck are you doing? You can't say the word bastards here, on the air. Here we go. Okay. Oh, that's, that's nice. Mine sounded better. You got a better pop than I did. That's all right. Let's take it. Let's do the Uncle Joe Biden sleepy sniff. Oh, it smells good. That actually smells really, really good. Wow, that smells really good. And this is only 6%. It's only 32 um, bitter units, too. Yeah. Well, let's take a sip. Let's get our cluckage clinkage going on. Prost, y'all. Prost, y'all. Okay. It's good. It's strong for a red beer. I mean, as that's far not as a the, red beer. That is a light IPA. Yeah, that's 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 kind of kind of strong for being an amber or a red beer. That's but, that's a light IPA. Yeah, it's not nearly I, as mellow as it should be. I don't think that they, there's a lot they, of hops in that. But okay, so I was expecting one thing going in, but it still doesn't taste bad. No, no, it's a good beer, and but, it doesn't taste like you're you know you're you're taking a piece of bark. But off if you're looking for you know Irish red beer or just you know it doesn't really this kinda, isn't it. it. It's not that's not the one. It's a good but, beer, but but no. now that I have this in my mind, we can go forward with this. Yeah. So, well. You ready to get in some topics? Yeah, let's jump right in. Let's. Uh, do you want to do you want to do the first topic, or do you want me to, or do you want to? Uh, well, you, you know want, what, or do you want to uh, just do it the old-fashioned way, and we can go, you know, settle this like adults with rock paper scissors. Oh right, yeah. So uh, okay, you're taking the first topic. Yeah, let's do this. So, um, <laughs> China, China. So as uh, Trump would say, so no, actually not Trump, China this time, but. Biden, Biden China. China. So Biden has got a new executive order. Does it deal with Bidenomics? Uh, it does, kind of. Um, really? Yeah. I was the, actually just uh, being to, a... To the ire of the smart uh, clerk, China, but. he has signed an executive order saying American companies cannot invest in American money capital, cannot be invested uh, in Chinese tech companies or anything that could lead to a military application in, on top. What? Not in both. Either one. So they, you can't invest China. That's crazy. And it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, China's really ticked off because uh, there's only been $200 billion coming out of America into investments for them in the last six years of these things that we're just given an executive order to stop doing. Well, I mean, you know, if we go back even to the pandemic, <clears throat> whenever we, whenever you go back to, to looking at the pandemic, and at that point in time, there was no way that the Chinese military could take any force on the face of the planet. They just didn't. No, they have no the, offensive the, the, capability. The, they had no offensive capability. Now, since that time, that'll actually make it worse. Oh, all right. Because, um, uh, yeah, because you're... Sometimes you it. just got to cup yeah, it. you guys got to cup it. But anyway, so since that time, one of the things that's... Ha- that like if, during, during the pandemic, one of the things that happened is that so many countries were outsourcing all of their goods and all of their computer tech everything to china so the rest of the world is not making any money the rest of the world is not making any type of financial gain but china is yeah which and is then weird somehow coming out of the pandemic without any of us knowing they got the largest navy in the world we are now number two in the well, in, as far as and, naval and the power other, behind china and the other kooky thing oh, I'm sorry. is china. china the other kooky thing is uh the virus came from Wuhan, China. It's weird. I don't so know. So China capitalized on did, a virus that because, came I mean, out of. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, I don't think that that was any any of the Fauci emails. No, no, it was it was definitely out of the Wuhan I, lab. Rooster? We actually had to, was it the pay for gain uh, uh, stuff going there that, too? Yeah, that's no. a myth. No, it's not that, a myth. That, that was a myth. It's, it's factual. It's out there. Um, yeah, uh, and, and I mean, in fact, it was actually just really I mean, insensitive of President of Trump calling it the China virus. But their v- version of the CDC is in Wuhan, two blocks away from where the virus I, started. They you said. know what? Once again, the fact checkers are going to have to look at this. I don't know if that's accurate, Rooster. Oh no, it's it's uh, it's accurate. Yeah, and of course, like you mentioned, China, uh, Trump got in trouble for calling it the the, the China flu yeah. or something. China I personally would have called it the Kung flu, but it should have been called the Kung flu. <laughs> that, we that missed, that's we missed just, a golden I, opportunity. You could copyright that, and that would have been great. <laughs> because then the entire time of the pandemic, guess what was happening? 
we were all kung flu fighting. Exactly. I mean, just look I mean, at the, the humor alone anyway, is worth but, it. But I mean, anyway. Uh, oh, and speaking of, it was really kind of funny because um, China, that has no ties to the Ukraine, and at that point in time, we're saying that they had no ties to Russia, comes out of the pandemic with two Ukrainian aircraft carriers as a part of their flagship fleet. yeah they'd started that program before the the pandemic but yes their mm -hmm. their first two aircraft carriers are made from ukrainian and re are redesigned ukrainian ships and then now they are supporting russia and still playing shadow games with the ukraine as far as the finances go yeah and then all of a sudden we just say we're cutting off 200 billion dollars from you after we just got through giving like a hundred and something billion yeah. dollars and then to of course they had that little the Ukraine. weird joint exercise with Russia on our Alaskan border that they actually managed to get into U.S. airspace with oh, the yeah. bombers without being interrupted by yeah. United States military or Canadian and and you know what you know what is just really kind of weird it's almost like this is gearing up for us to have to defend Taiwan yeah it's really weird yeah so I don't know I, I don't know but I you know just, Biden did say we would defend Taiwan he, he did clearly state that he doesn't remember saying it. But he he, al he also said that he never had any dealings with Burisma, but yeah, that's a, that's a different topic. That's, that's, in fact, that's that's a future topic coming <laughs> it up. Might, it might be a future topic <laughs> coming up in roughly about two yeah. minutes. But uh, but but yeah, I mean, one people laughed during the Obama um, uh, McCain uh, election because of the fact that McCain said that China and Russia were the biggest geopolitical threats. And everybody called him a boomer, that the Cold War was over, blah, 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 blah. Well, then, miraculously, China and Russia have still been the biggest geopolitical threats. Oh, yeah. I mean, even... Everybody, oh, timer just went off. <laughs> I was going to say, even timer just went off. Russia is the biggest threat, and then the Ukraine invasion happened with Crimea and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. So, But, I mean... Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. What are these? It's, what, what do people know? As, I mean, as long as the Orange Man's bad and Orange Man bad, and I'm not a Trump supporter, but you know, yeah, Orange Man bad. But as long as we keep Trump in the headlines, which is also something we're going to talk about in a second. Yeah. But anyway, how you like this beer, man? I like it. I like it. Uh, it's not my favorite red beer because it doesn't really. It's not fit a red into to me. that that amber red beer kind of thing. It's very hoppy for being uh, the the one thing that I do notice is that it's almost like in the aftertaste and the sides of my tongue. I can taste the red, but it's so hoppy on the front end. Yeah. All I can taste is the hops. But it's good. It's good. It's good beer. I, I do think it. that it's probably too heavy for 109 degrees. Yeah, I would say anybody who's really looking for a good Irish red beer, don't do this one. No. Uh, but now, but if you Texas, want a good beer from Dallas, this is a good beer. But if you want one that I think that would taste great with this heat, from the Texas Ale Project, go with the Pantera. Oh, Gold. yeah, the Pantera. That Golden Ale was just... That was yeah, good. it was. And it had the right amount of hops and all that yeah, kind of stuff yeah. to go with it. But anyways, uh, so yeah, it's it's good beer. It's definitely uh, it's definitely worth a try, guys. Can is can is definitely awesome. Yeah, it's, it's good and, beer. And for the most part, we have never had a beer from the Texas Ale Project that was bad. No, as the can says, think Texas, drink Texas. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't... I mean, whenever I think Texas... Uh, oh, speaking of... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, squirrel moment. So there's a, a coffee company down in Austin that's veteran-owned and operated called Invader Coffee. Okay. And most of the time, if um, I don't buy something local as far as coffee goes, I'll, eat, I'll go back and forth. I'll order from them, and I'll order from Black Rifle Coffee Company because it's veteran-owned, veteran-operated. Yeah. Um, but I specifically like to order from these guys um, just because the fact that, you know, that they were started here in Texas. Sure. And, um, and then I still, I'll still get some Black Rifle every now and then. Um, but the, the one that's coming in is their newest flavor of coffee and it's called don't California, my Texas. <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> you know, it gives you, we have that coffee soap that we introduced not too long ago. We actually make it from black rifle. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. So we make it from which, the, which, the, uh, the dark blend roast. Which uh, blend we use the, you? uh, was it the, the freedom dark roast or the, Oh, the freedom blend. Yeah. Maybe that's, yeah. or uh, it's a dark roast. That's, uh, I know it's, I have to look at the, the one that I but. used to always get was the caffeinated as cluck. Yeah. There's some pretty cool ones out there. Uh, I almost went with death wish, but we went with, uh, you know, being veteran owned, we went with yeah. you know, black, I, which I do like death wish and I do like Valhalla Java, but yeah. I try to stay with invader or black rifle yeah. coffee. And we got a new soap called black hand. 
very black. It's rock and roll, black end. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like like Metallica. Yeah. Black so end. Black end. Yeah. Yeah. You know they're gonna be in town next weekend. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they the two concerts back to back will not play. Each show will not play the same song. Yeah. Well, they're not back to back. Oh, I thought there, they were. There's, a, there's a day in between. There's oh. one on Friday and then one on well, Sunday. Well, I just saw that they were not going to play any of the same yeah, songs. They're the not going to play the exact shows. same set, and all the openers are different. So um, That'd be pretty Mammoth cool. Wolfgang Van Halen's yeah. group is, uh, and Pantera are opening for them on Friday night. And then there's a day off, and I think that the stuff that's, some of the stuff that you can watch, they like they rented a theater, and you can watch some of the stuff if you couldn't get there and watch it yeah. in the theater. And then on Sunday, it's like, uh, I think it's Ice Nine Kills, and then Five Finger Death Punch, and then Metallica, and they're doing a second set, but it's nothing from the from Friday That's night. cool, though. It's a, it's a way to motivate you to come see both. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I was lucky enough, and for that birthday present that I got, was yeah, got uh, the, the, I got the VIP. Yeah, you got the Friday one, right? I got both. Yeah. Oh, did you get both? Yeah. Okay, cool. It was, it was both. Sweet. If we're going to do it, man. Uh, do it right. We're going to do it right. Very cool. Yeah, this is actually a really good month for, for I mean, one, our amazing and local DFW scene has some of the most phenomenal musicians in it that anybody could shake a stick at. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, there's just, this, I mean, there's this local band called From Then On. You know, yeah. They're, 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 I mean, they're, 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 he's the okayest guitarist, I know. But um, <laughs> He's the most okay guitarist in DFW. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we have such great talent all the way across DFW in every genre, country, yeah. rock, metal, everything. Um, and then on top of that, you know, just some of the concerts that are coming in this month, we have... Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, Metallica, Pantera. Uh, I mean, and everybody that's coming in with them. We have, for those of us that remember watching them on Adult Swim, we have Death Clock coming in, <laughs> which I am going to be at. So we will not be recording that Thursday night because I will be at Death Clock. Understood. I mean, and what's funny is that the last time I saw them, they have a new guitarist now and she is amazing. But the last time I saw them, they actually had the animated videos from the cartoon, the, uh, the from Adult Swim, up behind them the entire time, yeah. and nobody was watching the band. They were singing mm. along to the, the and, animation and, and, and looking at the. It's like I always wanted to go to the. I wish I could have gone to that Rush concert that they had. I think in Red Rock, where they actually played the South Park clip from oh, those guys yeah. doing Tom Sawyer, and then yeah. they went straight into Tom Sawyer. <laughs> that had to be. That had to be hilarious. That had to be hilarious. That right had to be there. funny. All right, you ready to get into uh Yeah, we're way off topic uh, on this at this point. You know what? So, it's yeah. not the fact that we're off topic. Yeah. It's just the fact that we're we're circling around back to we're pulling a sacky. We're, yeah. we're, we're 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 circling, circling back. back around to Yeah, that. but she's not relevant anymore cuz she's moved Is on. She? So now we got the the Jean Pierre something uh oh, which I did see it was uh we didn't talk about this, but it was apparently um lesbian handicap week uh at the White House. Okay. Yeah, we're getting really specific on these things now. <laughs> I uh, I oh, hey, so hold on. Wish I was making it up. <laughs> so this isn't a joke. You're, no. not, you're not. You're not about to pull a joke. Nope. <laughs> No, I was what watching, happened? Did somebody I, bust I was just the watching lip? some reels, man, come through, and then she, that's it, there she is standing there. And she's like, "It's uh, as you guys might know, it's uh, here at the White House. We're gonna sell. We're gonna have a week celebration of a national or of a handicap a lesbian week." One, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, and so and she talked two, about herself being a woman of color and being a queer woman of color. Her words, not mine. So don't be jumping all over me on that stuff. You know, I'm just you know saying, you know, regurgitating what she says. I'm going back to my original statement. I guess that just means that somebody got a busted lip. <laughs> I just, all right, so let's jump into topic number two. I, just, I was like, wow, we're just getting into some obscure weeks at this point. I mean, this is left-handed bass players <laughs> who once. Saw Bob Marley <laughs> taking a leak. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Like, hey, we ran out of holidays. What can we do? Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't get it, man. <laughs> this week is designated for all those people that, whenever they turn on their right blinker, forget to turn it off. Yeah. This week is for you. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get into topic number two. Okay, I'll, I'll start this. Yeah, one you gotta off. take this one. The Biden family ties. So. The end, during during the presidential run. Is it a family or is it a crime syndicate at this point? Uh, whiskey and wine does not promote or condone. Any, no, um, no, he doesn't. He, no, that's the Clinton page that says all the. Oh my bad. That's, that's the one that has all the. It's me. It's me. 
has the body count. But yeah, um, you know, during, during, <laughs> it's 59 now. Oh, it's 59? Sorry. Um, I haven't been keeping up. <laughs> during his presidential All those campaign, sad people. how he had talked about that he didn't know what his son's involvement was in Burisma, blah, 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 blah. Well, then all of a sudden it comes out, actually, there there's recordings of you talking to these people. Then it comes out. We have video evidence of you playing golf yeah. with these people, and then it, and then you know one thing after another just keeps happening and keeps going and keeps going, until the now nobody can hide it anymore. Well, his lawyer did stutter a lot and say that yes, okay, so Biden was on those Barisma calls that he said he never knew about or attended, but he was just there as a loving father to talk about the weather. Yeah, because that's that's what you talk about with an executive board of a natural gas company. Yeah. Um, so how's the so, weather in Ukraine? <laughs> So now it's blatantly obvious that they were using the sale of power and influence. Yes. So one of uh, Hunter Biden, the Renaissance man, the smartest man Joe Biden knows, the artist extraordinaire, uh, his best friend that was also a business partner comes out and go, oh, no, Biden – Absolutely was on at least 20 of those calls and knew exactly what was happening. Um, okay. So first, I would like to uh, offer my condolences because of his suicide in a couple weeks. Yeah, I think um, it's this thing. I mean, I know the suicide hadn't happened yet, but I think the funeral's already scheduled for yeah. like three or four weeks out. I think it's thir- ne- uh, two yeah. Thursdays from now. Yeah. Something like that. And the following day after the funeral, Trump will be indicted. <laughs> and, uh, naturally. <laughs> but um, so Devin Archer, uh, I mean, it's. It, he, he comes out and he, and he says, yeah, the president was absolutely on these calls. He knew what was going on. And then amazingly, once again, Trump gets indicted. It's kind of weird that every single time something gets brought up against the Biden family, within 48 hours, there's another Trump indictment. I think it's actually under 48. I think it's within 24 hours. It, it's usually very next business day. Oh, really? Uh, that the, he's indicted. Every, just, anytime there's a scandal that comes out that could make the news... There's a Trump indictment that comes out right on top of it to make sure it doesn't make headline news. Well, you know, uh, it's just kind of funny because you, you do realize that Biden's the most popular president of all time, right? Well, 80, 81 million votes. Yeah, there were 81 million votes now, that were uh, that being presented sa- for him. Now, now, that being said, and, and, you know, we've talked about some of this stuff. I mean, I I believe in some of the cryptozoology and things mm-hmm. like that sure. uh, because it can't be disproven. So, I mean, yeah. there's a possibility. Yeah. At this point, I am 99.99% sure that Bigfoot is more believable than 81 million votes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you're more likely to, uh, I think, be uh, sexually assaulted by Bigfoot than yeah. vote for Biden at this point. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to the overlord. Maybe that's how he got her. Could be. Could be. But anyway. <laughs> Protect your um, shame, cave overlord. <laughs> but the... Uh, but, you know, it's kind of funny because whenever you look at stuff like this, athletes like Pete Rose, for example, they're not allowed to bet on the games. No, that would be conflict of interest. That's conflict and, of interest. And you so could then, actually steer that game towards that, that bet. Exactly. But Congress congressmen are allowed to invest in companies. Well, yeah, because Congress has nothing to do with, say, policies that could help the economy. Or, or certain industries, like or natural s- gas from yeah. Ukraine, yeah, or you know, but I mean, anything like that. Everything that's coming, <laughs> out, everything that's coming out about this whole Burisma thing is trying to get swept under the rug. And even the most staunch left news networks, they can't ignore it now, and they're not ignoring it now. Yeah, and it's really sad how you know, like on CNN, they're very left. And even they are talking about how the disapproval rating for Biden right now is around 54%. Kamala is at about 52.3%. The approval rating for both is 40% and below. They can't even ignore it now. Well, Kamala did do an interview, and she said that there are plenty of polls to show that she is the most popular vice president in history. She couldn't name one. (laughs) No, but, no. But, yeah, she said, yeah, it's... It's it's, it's, it's on the they're, A, they're, B, they're, C, they're, they're, they're A, there. T, and T. Yeah, they're, they're, they're there somewhere. C, B, C. Yeah. They're somewhere. I think she's pulling well with the people coming across the border. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tower just went off. Tower just went off. You know, speaking of, speaking of the border, we should just put a wall around California. We could. I mean, we could. I mean, we should just label it Cluck Tardistan and put a board, put a, <laughs> put a wall around it. 
Well, you know, California, I mean, it's got its it's got its positive stuff. I mean, it's it's got beautiful weather. Uh, the, it's on uh, fire. The the mountains are gray. Still on fire. Um, They're bankrupt. You can't go to the sidewalk without stepping over human feces. Um, pedophile rings? <laughs> Hollywood? I, I don't know. Is, is that a good thing? No, I'm no. pretty sure that's not a good no. thing. <laughs> Those of us that are part of the broadcasting of whiskey and wine do not condone pedophilia in any form or fashion. Yeah, I got nothing, man. I'm sure it's. I'm sure some people love it. Who? People who live there and pay those high taxes and high gas prices and and the people that can't kick squatters out of their house yeah. if they. If well, you know, I hear the homeless on, in Venice. You know, they 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 really like being there. That's a that's a nice place to be homeless. Better than you know, say Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know, speaking of that, because we're talking about the some of that some of that stuff. Um, because you know how a lot of the a lot of the cities in California that they said that they were going to be open open border cities they're going to be the um, sanctuary uh, sanctuary cities yeah. yeah well remember whenever New York said that they were going to be a sanctuary city and that they were welcoming all the illegal immigrants yeah, having, uh, they, they don't seem to like their uh, their well, their, their new I friends. don't know if you saw the the uh, thing that came out today that uh, New York is to spend. 12 billion dollars on illegal immigration which was three times the projected amount but they still wanted an open border and they still want an open border well you know i've said it on this show i've said it many times before we had the show i i have said it since i was they won't care until it happens in the northeast is that what you were going to say exactly It, it Legal immigration doesn't mean anything to this country until it happens in the Northeast. Uh, and that's because that's where the majority of the population there in California. And not from Texas the Canadians there, eh? Yeah, and, and until you start seeing... Not from seeing, the snow Mexicans. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you even look at like the senators and stuff in California. Some of these guys all reside uh, in the Northeast. Even though they're representing these other states, uh, they, they have houses and compounds in the you Northeast. Know, you know what? This would be a good transition for our favorite subject, our favorite topic. The, the big F U F U Northeast. It does no, not no. stand for follow up because morals not here. No, it does not. So, speaking of that, there's a a woman that's been very influential in California. That's been a member of Congress for oh for for only a year. She's or an two. institution in herself. She, she's only been in Congress a year or two. Mm, but, no, um, and I think it's been more like 50, that, 60, I, I, I don't know. We'll have to get the fact checkers How on that. How old is Methuselah? <laughs> <laughs> We're measuring her age in light years at this there, point. Okay, there we so, go. Uh, Diane Feinstein, did you hear about this? 90-year-old Diane Feinstein. Yeah, she's in her 90s. If she's did you hear not, about this? Yeah. Yes, I did. Uh, do you want to share or do you want me to? So, yeah, I'll share. So, oh. she has recently... That was sexy. Uh given over power of attorney over everything to her daughter because she's incapable incapable of making her own decisions now she is 90 years old yes but and uh, hold on and she's in a wheelchair yes and she's not making any of her decisions no no she's not capable but she has promised her constituents to stay an active member in congress so we have a woman that is 90 years old in a wheelchair that signed over power of attorney is admitted that she is not capable of making decisions on her own behalf that is still making decisions for the American people. Yeah. Did I sum that up right? Yeah, but I mean the good news is if you're a lobbyist, you can now buy that vote with like lime jello. <laughs> Be like, hey, Miss Feinstein, come here. I got some Werther's Originals. Ooh, hard and candies. I, and I got some of those little <laughs> strawberry candies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The kind that's oh, in the strawberry yeah, wrapper. Strawberry wrapper. I, like, I like it. I like where you're Here, going. Here's what I need. Yeah. I'll give you two bags of name brand Werther's Original and a bag of the strawberries if you'll pass this vote through. Yeah. But, I mean, on seriousness on the on the lobbying, so do they have to go through her power of attorney <laughs> daughter now do they got to buy her off <laughs> not even not even, the, not even the lobbying so i mean if she's not capable of making her own decisions is her daughter now sitting in with her at congress mom yeah mama you mom. want you want to vote nay on this mom i need you to wake up mom yeah 
You know what? You stay asleep. It doesn't sweetie. matter. I power turn. I'll just Here, sign I'll your just, name. I'll just, I'll just sign your name. I'll just put this blanket over your legs. Yeah, it's just. Oh my god, it, it's, it's it's clucking laughable. You can't even so, make this up. It's so ridiculous. It, it's clucking, clucking laughable. Oh, oh. speaking of ridiculous, because you know, like one of the themes of the show is the Constitution, right? Yeah. Okay. So, constitutionally, and you used to be uh, a member of, of law enforcement. Correct. Um, constitutionally, and with the way the courts work, say I get subpoenaed. Mm-hmm. And I get subpoenaed, say, over a specific topic like, let's say, fire ant funeral beer. Yeah. So With if- any documents that I have that pertain to fire ant funeral be admissible and subpoenaed into the court of law in regards to Well, the- if they were subpoenaed, uh, not only would they be admissible, uh, before they're admissible, they would actually be required by law that you provide so them. So if I'm getting brought to court over fire ant funeral, yeah, any documentation I have regarding fire ant funeral would ha- essentially have to be handed over to you Prior to the the correct, if 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 that's what the subpoena states that you have to give off or anything without, okay. I would have to hand it off to you. So, or I'm you would gonna, have to hand it off. So, to I'm going to segue into something right quick. Yep. Uh, and I, this is a solemn moment. I'm going to bring up the darkest day in American history. Dun dun dun. January sixth. Uh, oh, I was going to go 9/11, but okay. no, no, no. <laughs> Maybe. Not Pearl Harbor, maybe, not, maybe not, Pearl not, Harbor maybe, not the race maybe, riots of Tulsa. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe Tulsa. Not anything with the Monday, Civil I mean, War. No, no um, really. Not 9-11. JFK's assassination. Not JFK's assassination. January 6th, the darkest day in American history. Well, you know, those dudes did go behind, and they did walk single file behind the velvet ropes inside the Capitol. I don't know if you and heard that. one about guy it. was dripped like a buffalo. That's scary. <laughs> buffalo. <laughs> so I don't know if you heard about it. But somehow, miraculously, after this last indictment, all of the January 6th documents have been destroyed and deleted. Huh. So you're saying that once you indict someone about the January uh, inciting a riot on January 6th, that the same government destroyed all the evidence that led to their own findings what this person was indicted for. And as far as I can tell, all those documents should have been admissible to the court of law. Yeah, so that's one thing. So then that means that they've destroyed evidence. evidence. Correct. So I don't really know how well the the court's going to rule on on, this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was, oh, I'm sorry. I was reliving 2013 whenever Benghazi happened and the emails got delivered. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry. Yeah. It so was a, I, it was now one of the uh, flashbacks. One of the Democrats on the board on that one uh, on the committee for that did say that they were unaware that there was no that there's you know that there is no laws or about the laws that required them to keep all that testimony and evidence. Yeah, because that's generally how a subpoena works. Yeah, but it's weird that the government would investigate something, say, you know what, we don't need any of that documentation of all the millions of dollars we spent on an investigation. But, you know, it, speaking of, like, millions of dollars in investigation, um, you know how one of the indictments was about the Russian collusion, which fell flat. Didn't the guy But just then get... one of the FBI agents yeah, who, who... that was a part of the team investigating it literally just got arrested for Russian collusion. It's weird. And now he can't make any comments. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's kind of like it, our Devin it, Archer guy that we talked about earlier who uh, had a warrant for his arrest issued for the day he was set to testify. I know. It's so uh, weird. In front of Congress. That is so weird. Yeah. I mean, that's just a... You know, that's what a coincidence. That's what the coincidence. Yeah, that's, 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 that's all it is. That's, all, that's total, total coincidence. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just a coincidence. It's just kind of like when Biden said that he has never had any indication or conversations or given any um, personal or given any opinions one way or another whether Trump should be prosecuted, although there are tapes of him talking, saying that he should saying be prosecuted. That he should oh, be prosecuted. Of, did you see the... the the last little speech with Biden where they had to pull him away from the baby? The one he was nibbling on? No, the the second one after that. Oh, okay. Sorry. The, the Secret Service actually pulled him away from the baby. Oh, that's where he was trying to get up to the baby. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Come on it was back after here. the nibbling. Yeah, come on back, Creepy Joe. Ah. <laughs> uh, you know, speaking of Creepy Joe, 
Where in, in the, the world, world is Kamala Harris? Well, Brad, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a hint. She's probably right near a place that that rhymes with Mexico. That's a negative. <laughs> She's not near Mexico? No. she's oh. The border czar is nowhere near the border. Because, you know, we just had another major influx come through uh, Eagle Pass. Yeah. Well, so she went so. to Florida. Oh. Yeah, that's, so, that's close to Eagle Pass, yeah, Texas. So last week she was busy. She went to Florida. Uh, she uh, she went to talk to Rob DeSantis. Uh, excuse me. Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Governor DeSantis. Uh, about his uh, take on the, the school, the way they're teaching. The, the public school system is going to teach slavery. So she had to go down there and... Uh, you know, talk to him about that one because she disagrees with it. Uh, because that's, you know, where the vice president needs to spend her time is in, uh, you know, state school functions. Um, Naturally. Yeah. Uh, not national things, but yeah. you know, local state things. But and, anyways. and considering that she can't form a complete sentence, yeah. the one person she does not need to get into a debate with is Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Loving, hating, I, I, I have mixed opinions about Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Well, but I will say this: the guy can debate. Yeah, and so after she left that one, she of course had other went things to, to Mexico. Work Negative. She went to the border. No, she went Raymondville. To the, no, she, Brownville. She went Mission. To, no, Eagle Pass. No, Juarez. Negative. El Paso. Negative. Laredo. Sounds like it. Not really. It's Iowa. <laughs> That's close to Laredo. No. <laughs> it's closer to Canada. <laughs> Than it is. I meant uh, that it's it's close, in the Midwest. I it's, meant that it's close to it's the, Midwest of the country. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's closer to Laredo, Ontario. No, they they, it's, they it's grow Laredo, a lot of corn Ontario, there. Laredo, Ontario. So, anyways, so, it's a real place. Look it up, Rooster. Yeah. So, having to talk about the the state of Florida's laws, she had to go to Iowa to talk about their laws uh, because she's again in disagreement with what the state of Iowa is doing about so abortion. So she had to go do her pro-abortion stance in in Iowa. So the the funny thing is. Um, I mean that makes sense. That's if you're if you're Ron DeSantis or you're in Iowa and you're the legislature in Iowa, um, the woman who has been in charge of fixing the border is the person arguing against you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna be like that. Once it, again, it's gonna be th- like when that Wrexham team of Ryan Reynolds played the Wrexham, women's US, <laughs> damn near killed them. When it played the women's uh, soccer team, oh, the U.S. soccer team. So, uh, oh, timer just went off. But I, I'm going to finish this thought. So, speaking of the U.S. soccer team, the U.S. women's team, this was the first time that we have been eliminated first this, round this early in uh, the World Cup. Yeah. And Megan Rapinoe, who demands equal pay, is she the goalie? No, she's like she's the one that she has. Was, a, she was the short-haired chick, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. No, sorry. I guess do, I should assume I, she's a chick. Do do I do I believe in equal pay? Absolutely. Yeah. However, the amount they get paid for the amount that they draw, they're being carried by the men's team. Oh, absolutely. It's like the WNBA. Yeah. Yeah. It should be so, proportionate to the money that's earned in your <clears throat> profession. But that but that's not equal pay. No, that's what equality no, would actually be. No, that's not equal pay. No, they they want what they call equity now, which is not equality. Well, equality is the same chance. Tomato, tomato, equity they're is, good, sir. I get to make that up as I want because that's not even what equity means, but they've changed the definition of that. Kind of like when Biden changed the definition of what a recession is. Yeah. So what I found really, really funny. So she misses the kick and she's retiring after this season. She's anti-American, playing on the national women's team getting funded by our some of it's being funded not all of it but some of it's being funded by our tax dollars yeah which i'm okay with sure. I, i'm okay with funding our olympians yeah. and stuff like that um but what i found funny is that you know she says that she's going to retire after this after this one and during her interview she said what with, they're they're doing an interview and goes what's the one thing that you want to be most known for whenever it comes to your legacy in soccer. Now, up until she got all kinds of woke and political, yeah. she had all kinds of accomplishments to choose from. She really did. Yeah. And you know what she said? She's crying and says, equal pay. Mm. Out of all the accomplishments that she could have chosen that she did in, in the world of soccer, 
she chose the one thing that nobody cared about. Here's the because deal. most of us know that the the NBA keeps the WNBA afloat. I'm not saying they're yeah. that they're that they're bad athletes. I'm not saying that by any means. No, I mean, but that's why that, some of these women command a full but, seven thousand dollars a year. <laughs> But you know, that being said, if you're looking at it like a business, essentially what's happening is that you have Amazon on one side oh, yeah. and then you have a startup company on the other and that's in the NBA and WNBA and that's in soccer too. But it doesn't have to be business. It's life in general. It's your personal finances or a company you're running. If you spend more money than you make. That's called going in the red. Yes. It's bad. <laughs> That's bad, okay? It, nothing good happens after that. Um, and that's what all of this stuff is. I don't know. I went in the is. red one time, and it wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So what do you think about this beer, man? Uh, it's good. I like it. I like it. Um, it's grown on me. Yeah. Now, it's once, once I kind of changed my mindset of it being a an ale, and then I changed my mindset of it being a red, and I'm looking at it like an yeah. IPA, it's not a bad IPA. And I'm not a huge IPA drinker. I mean, if I wanted to, to, if I wanted to go take a bite off of an evergreen tree, I'd just go out in the forest. But um, this one, it has enough hops in it that it has the IPA flavor, but it's not overbearing. No, but I mean, I will say uh, now that we're on the sec, I'm on my second one here. Um, it's definitely not a light beer. It's a full beer. Yeah, it's I mean, a you full can feel beer. it. So it's got the full beer feeling like an amber would. Uh, it's just it's got a lot more hops than you normally see yeah. in an amber beer. I don't like I don't dislike it. No. So if you like hops and you like amber beers, once again, I think that beers. if if they would have promoted this beers as a as a light IPA, it probably would have changed my mindset totally going into it. Yeah. But um, but I will say this though, there's nothing about this beer or any of these beers. Call it an amber IPA. This amber IPA that leaves me. Yeah. Prickly on the inside. An amber epa. An amber epa. Amber epa. But no, so I mean, I I I don't know if I would buy it during the summer again, just because it does set heavy. No, this is a good more. This is like a good fall beer. Yeah, fall beer. I wouldn't say winter beer, but yeah, good, a good fall, fall beer. beer. It's just, it's like the perfect sweet weather time. This is one of those that you know if you're sitting around the campfire. And you got something cooking over over it, and Man, even, it, and, even and Thanksgiving, you're sitting around with your family. No, you no, start absolutely smack not. To your family. You lost me at family <laughs> to get no. So let's go back to a good setting <laughs> oh, where that you know where, where that we're camping. You know, it's 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 just enough where it's chilly at night, but it's not cold. Yeah. It's comfortable during the day. You're sitting around. You know, you're you're throwing uh, something that you used to be able to pet over the fire. And 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 you're eating it. This is a good campfire beer. It is. It's it a is. good camp fall campfire beer. Yeah. No, it's a good beer. It is. Uh-huh. Uh, so I recommend it. Uh, but like again, I go back to and I don't want to. You know what? I don't want to end on a negative. It's a good beer. It is uh, a good. Give beer. it a try. Yeah. And, and it, like like we said, they're they're, they're right here in Dallas. There's more positive than there is negative. There's way this. more positive than negative. They're right here in Dallas. Give the Texas Ale Project any of the Texas Ale oh, Project, and, and, and again, any of this stuff is going to be better than any of the 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 big brand beers, and it's the same price. Yeah, you're going to get a better deal than getting say a, the, a the only difference or is, something else. is that you're going to have to go to a grocery store or you're going to have to go to a liquor store to get. Yes, it. I had to go to a liquor store because for this. They're, because they're not in a convenience. But store. I typically buy my beer at the liquor store anyways because it's actually usually about a buck cheaper. Most of the time it is, yeah, yeah, as yeah. opposed to the Overlord who just gets his you know his steel reserve. Yeah, yeah, but you know he's all steel reserve, fruit punch flavor, and blue, blue raspberry, raspberry. And, uh, buying those little single bottles of uh, Fireball fake whiskey. And I don't know if he does. I'm just assuming that's that's something he he does for his entertaining of his guests. As I give the finger well, quotes, I, I do know that whenever he goes to the <laughs> please, gas sir, station, please, sir, Let I do know, know that whenever he goes to the gas station, that he uh, gets some of those single servings of like uh, what's that stuff called? Extends. <laughs> All right, you've been listening to episode 82 of Whiskey and Wild with the rooster and the madman. And remember, in a world full of chickens, beer rooster, you're listening to Whiskey and Wine. Thanks for tuning in to Whiskey and Wine with the rooster and the madman. We can catch brand new episodes every Saturday at 4 p.m. on Deep Dallas Radio on Lock and Loaded with DJ Shane Guns. 
Special thanks to our sponsor, GiftedChicken.com, home to all your beard, bath, and body care needs. Veteran owner operator right here in North Texas. Remember to pick up a bottle of Overlord Dungeon Oil. It's 100% all natural coconut oil. Leaves it prickly on the insides.